Pisces, hi, welcome to your read for the week. We are gonna be looking at the tarot. These are general reads. Take what resonates with you. Leave the rest for everybody else. If you like your own personal read, feel free to reach out to me um, via email. My email is in the description below. Also have my Instagram and Twitter there. Feel free to follow me there if you wanna to get to know me personally as a friend. Now, um, this week we're gonna be looking at past, present, future energies Pisces so keep in mind this is going to be about you and a person and your love story Pisces and we're going to be looking at the past and the present those will resonate and then there's the future energy that 100% won't resonate with you why because it's the future and you came to a tarot read to find out the future what's going to happen here okay so let's see for you Pisces Also at the end of the read, towards the end of the read, or maybe during the read, we'll be focusing a little bit on divine feminine and masculine energies. So we'll be able to see what exactly is going on on your spiritual ride here. All right, I got your cards now, let's go. Eight of Pentacles here, working. Five of Swords, Conflicts, and Nine of Swords, a Nightmare. This is a nightmare for you in the past. That's past. Present, the Star, Hope. Four of Wands, some sort of balance, something stable, and the Knight of Wands. Never mind. And then, uh, <laughs> the future, no, sorry, the future energies is with the Wheel of Fortune. The wing, the boar, something, oh, nice. And the king of chalices, look at you at the end of the read though, looking good, Pisces. I feel like this is gonna be one of the lighter reads this week cause you know, this king of chalices next to that wing boar, you're the only sign that pulled the wing, the boar card, but it was at the end of the read, so it's not gonna make sense to you. And I'll, I'll describe what that card means towards the end of the read for the connection. Um, Eight of Pentacles here in the past, Five of Swords, Nine of Swords. Um, you know, I'm getting vibes of last year. Obviously, we're just in January, so last year wasn't too far away. But Eight of Pentacles, you worked a lot last week. Yeah, last week. <laughs> Maybe last week you worked hard. But last year, you worked really hard on something. And it may have been a spiritual transformation as well, but I feel it was mainly the coins. Some of you were working very hard and you dealt with conflicts and specifically I feel like whatever conflict you were dealing with, um, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good at all. It, it, it put you in a space where you may have lost sleep and some of you may have gotten into some sort of depression, anxiety, and that led you to some sort of awakening here. In the present energy, so it looks like you're doing good now, Pisces. I'm, I'm really happy to say that because this past stuff is not really that important, but it connects the read. It's important we look at the past in tarot because tarot was meant to look at the past anyways. So we have the star here. There is some sort of hope for balance, but it keeps seeping in in the form of this knight of wands, which, you know, for their side, um, this is a lot of back and forth type of energies and it's also a lot of passion. Maybe this person connects their love language to passion and maybe you're connecting it to work, actually putting work into a relationship. Why is that? Well, think about, you know, when we look at a zodiac wheel, we have, you know, who you are at the beginning, the way you communicate, your activities, your relationship, to your learning, to your career, right? And then you're all the way at the end at the 12th house, the dream, the, the, the spiritual, the foreign lands, the, the places you can't see. When you shut your eyes that's and you're not seeing anything, that's the 12th house. That's your home. 
it, it, and what happens with Libra and why Saturn's there with Libra is because after a relationship, after there's passion, after there's love, after there's sex, after there's naughty things going on there, what comes after that? Well, that passion doesn't necessarily need to die out, but it slowly kind of simmers down, doesn't it? And then Saturn takes over in Libra and it's time to do some work. And so in the past, where you were expecting to work, maybe all you got was passion from this person, and that caused an imbalance. And maybe you sought to create some sort of balance with somebody that was focusing mainly on the physical pleasures of this life, and not on the, the actual, well, physical work. There's a difference between work and pleasure, right? Um... Because they did definitely put the work on you, but in, in, a, in a very erotic sense. <laughs> but here in the future, you have the Wheel of Fortune, the Winged Boar, and King of Chalices. There's somebody showing up here that feels... There's something very lucky feeling. Because the Winged Boar is like, I had five cards in here that I removed. And this is the only one I left because it's the lucky card. And you get it at the end of the read, meaning for the future energies. There's something here that appears. And I was looking over here because I have them hanging on my wall over here. All those cards. I have two sets. But here's one. That all through and all, all of this, there is definitely a strong sense of reconnection with somebody here. Or that uh, you're able to escalate something into a beautiful, passionate relationship. Um, and the King of Chalices at the end of the read is very beautiful. It's very Neptunian. It's very Pisces-like. On their side, they're showing up now in a balanced way where they show up with emotions. So where they showed up with the physical pleasure, now they show up with emotions. That means that what? The next thing that shows up after 8th house is the learning. They've learned. Then 10th house, career. They're learning that now it's work, putting the work into you. Possibly getting a new job here too as well for their side. Let's clarify here on your side, this Eight of Pentacles, what you were planning to work on here in the past, although we already know what it is, don't we? Ten of Wands, Temperance, Ace of Pentacles. Well, you may have dropped them because they've caused some conflicts in your life. And I do see that attached with the Nine of Swords. Also, Nine of Swords on their side, they also dealt with sleepless nights. The Chariot, they may have moved away. The Wheel of Fortune, Page of Chalices. And I see them learning something here. I see that they're, they're learning something about themselves as well. They may have moved away. Now this is possibly at a long distance from you. I'm sounding like such a cookie card tarot card reader for your read. And I beat up all the other signs this week, Pisces. But for your read, I, I just can't find the card to beat you up on. I'm really trying to, to be hard on these reads. But you've got a very nice light read. I can't think of who else pulled a nice light read. I think it was this. I think it was Aquarius. Maybe Sag. Ooh, I don't know. Oh yeah, you have the star card. That is Aquarius there. So maybe you're dealing with an Aquarius. Um, but on their side, I get the sense of maybe they feel like they needed to move because they felt too much pressure in one place and that was driving them nuts. Maybe they were just going crazy living in a city. That's happened to me. I've had to leave a city because I felt crazy there. When I lived in Tokyo, I, I felt I was going bananas there. I had to leave. I moved to Osaka. Boom, I'm in a much better place. Um, two of swords here. Eight of chalices and five of chalices. Um, you know, in the current energies, Pisces, I see that you've dropped this. You've let go of hope of this ever materializing into anything.
you've let go of hope of this actually materializing into anything. For the connection, Four of Wands, um, you both are balancing these energies, but from different places. Because I see somebody may have moved or somebody just left the connection, right? Um, Six of Swords on their side, the Devil, and the King of Chalices. Now we have the King of Chalices here twice. Um, somebody really thinks of you in a very pleasurable way, Pisces. Um, but they possibly overthink. So masculines, uh, this is going to hit hard for a divine masculine, and this is going to hit hard for the divine feminine. But since I see the king here, let's focus on divine masculine stuff. Masculines, if you're a masculine Pisces, um, right now you know that there might be a feminine that's really attached to you. And that's actually a turnoff for you. You rather come from a space of the star card, Aquarius, community, friendships, you rather come from a space of where it can turn into a friendship, into something passionate that you have to pursue and put your emotions into. I see that. For the feminine, you might see this person putting their energy into other places where you rather you obsess about this person putting energy into you because they've walked away. And there's another moving card, Six of Swords, on their side. There's definitely a sense of them moving away or they've moved away. In the current energy. Now in the future energies, this is where we won't resonate. With the Wheel of Fortune there, you have the Seven of Chalices, Knight of Swords, Two of Pentacles. You know, you know, if this is you, like, saying, you know, well, I've dropped this here in the past, and you're trying to find things Maybe you need to really learn a lesson here that putting pressure on new things is you just kind of end up with the same thing. Because when you look at something as your only option, and especially like if it's online type stuff, you kind of put pressure on online people, right? And online, it's kind of a scary world, right? Or if you're like uh, meeting new energies, let's say you meet a new person, you know, just out on the street here. And it's like you're you're starting to already put them on the same pedestal of other. We call that the rebound. So you might be in rebound mode here. And then the wing bore is like because you you you're putting people on this high pedestal. And then what happens is because they're on a rebound and you've put them on that pedestal when they don't meet the expectations of that where they should be doing. You kind of cause another little tower moment here, and there is no tower here. But you do have this winged boar for the connection. So like if you've already dropped it and you're already starting to connect to new energies, um, definitely a week to say, hey, look, uh, I might just not be living in the best me. And I might be putting expectations on people like I put expectations on this. Uh, King of Chalices here with the Nine of Wands. For their side, come on, stop sticking together. Eight of Wands and the Moon. This side, hundred percent coming back. Some of you don't want to hear that. Some of you do. Um, if you're a divine masculine, be careful that you don't go back to energies that you've already rejected um, because you feel insecure like there's nobody out there. If you're a divine masculine right now, I do get a sense of that you feel like there's no other option for you. So you might go back to the energy you've abandoned. Um, you don't have to do that. I think there will be an option for you here. Uh, the thing is that maybe you've kept back secrets from this person as well, like Divine Masculine. Uh, for Divine Feminine and for, you know, general reading here, I think what we need to know is that this person rises to some sort of communication about something they've kept on the back burner, something that they've been hiding from you. What that is, I don't know for you, Pisces. Um, they're not explaining that to me in the read. Their side is 
covering up something with the moon and when I look at the moon card oh boy I know that that is somebody in their feels but that's also somebody that refuses to show you the dark side because you can't see that side of the moon um, you just can't divine masculine what you need to know this week focus on Queen of Pentacles your kingdom uh, focus on ecology as well uh, focus if you've been rejected divine masculine this is focusing on the feminine energies that want to bring their coins together with you that they want to they want to grow something with you in an empire and that they're willing to you know they could be like uh, energies of nurturers right you might find somebody that has somebody in your space that really does want to connect to you and nurture you almost kind of a motherly like quality with that moon and that queen of pentacles um divine feminine yeah this week you need to do a little bit more introspection about people that are in and out of your life here with that knight of wands here in the current energies uh, whether you shut that down whether you invite it back in i think um this is you to introspect it's your mission to introspect what that decision is not your tarot card reader not your astrologer there's a deep introspection going on could be dealing with a virgo but divine feminine i really think if you focus a little bit more on what's good for you um, you end up getting something beautiful here in the form of maybe what the past person looked like but just in a form that's more viable for your life um, because Pisces you're incredibly lucky when it comes to this love situation in your life this love story you may not know it and this may not resonate with you there is something here that happens in your life that you just can't believe and it will happen. That's all I got for you, Pisces. And I'll catch you guys again next week.